Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial. This is going to be a tutorial on bone dynamics and wind dynamics. I am getting close to the end of this animation, um, but one thing I would like to do is uh, to the, as, uh, as my morph occurs, I have these strands of hair. One thing I want to do is I want to add some sort of uh, interaction with the atmosphere around it so that the hair moves um, with the current of the air. Um, not a lot of wind, just a little bit. And so I'm going to add some bones to uh, these strands of hair and then also put some wind dynamics so that way they sort of lightly blow. Um, so let's get started. So one thing you want to keep in mind when you're animating is trying to get your character rigged before you animate. That's one mistake that I made. Um, so I have animations basically attached to all these bones, including this master bone that is really attached to the whole head here. Um, that can make it difficult to rig things going back to frame zero and rigging things when you've already animated. You have to get creative at that point because I don't want to re-rig everything. Um, the other thing too is my strands of hair, they don't have very many points. So if I select my hair layer, you can see I only have basically four points for that strand of hair and basically four or five points for this strand of hair. Um, so it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to um, put lots of bones there. Um, you, if, if I could flexi bind it, it would, but that's not going to work because of all the animations that I already have going on and already the animations that are associated with this bone. But for this animation, I'm going to use one bone for each strand of hair. The wind dynamics will act on those bones and the, the, strands, the strands of hair will blow with the wind. So back at frame zero, I'm going to select my bone layer, add bone, and at the top of the ear is where this really begins. I'm going to drag one bone down to here and do the same thing with the opposite side. Um, and I forgot to select the master bone, so I'll have to just reparent, which is fine. They're both going to be parented to this bone here. And then I'm going to select the points of the hair. basically these four points. And I'm going to bind those points to this bone here and this one here. I'll bind those five points of the hair. This is before the morph occurs. That's why the hair is all up, up here. As the animation happens, this hair drops down um, and it'll match the, the length of the bones. Okay, let's go ahead and test that. If I uh, manipulate bones with uh, quick key Z. Uh, you can see it's working there. It uh, looks like I'm actually not going to want to use that top point because it starts to stick out with that strand of hair. So I'm going to not bind that top, uh, not bind that top point. So if I go here, just select these. Uh, oh, select this one. Press your bind points tool, and we'll say unbind that point. Okay. So what you actually have to do, I have to rebind that that point that was sticking out. Uh, down to the master bone here. So now it's working. So the wind should blow that strand. Here I'll probably unbind that point as well. Let's grab this point and I'm going to bind it to the master bone here. Um, and actually bind the second one as well. So this is trial and error, but there we go. I just had to get these uh, these two points bound back to the master bone. All right, so these are bo bound to the hair. Uh, I need to get the strands of light. You can see these strands of light. They need to go with the hair because those lights are reflect reflecting on the hair. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll select my lighting. And I think we can just do... Maybe even maybe everything but the top point. Bind. Select this bone. Shift and get all the points here. Then we're gonna bind. Bind points. Now let's double check that rig. Alright, good. So now the strands of light are moving with the strand of hair. And that's what we want. Uh, one thing you can see as 
the hair passes behind some of the lines of the face. So I just need to reorder my layers over there because obviously we don't want the hair to pass behind anything on the face. So I'm just going to grab my hair layer and we'll move it up in front of the eyes, in front of the mouth, in front of the teeth, the lips, and right behind the shade because the shade has more to do with the that should do what we're okay so once you've got your bones rigged and the layers that you want bound to them and the point or the points that you want bound to them you're going to make sure you have these two bones selected you can do it by clicking and holding shift um, and then you're going to go up to this bone constraints and down here where it says bone dynamics you want to enable that and basically it has a few different settings torque is basically the force that the bone will move with and then the springiness is how much it sort of rebounds with and then the damping is how much that that torque and springiness will decay um, we'll add the wind a little bit later um, but uh, just so you kind of understand uh, the bone dynamics is basically how when you're moving other bones uh, the parents of these bones these ones will react with a sense of gravity or atmosphere um, forces pushing on them and uh, they'll bounce back and forth um, depending on how you move the parent bone um, in our case we want it to be uh, uh, moved by the forces of the atmosphere which will be this wind we're not really going to do much with this bone like if we were to rotate this these ones would bounce back and forth until that damping force uh, caused them to decay but you might even see a little bit as we move uh, forward in the animation you can um, sometimes it does because I do have this bone moving a little bit um, not much but let's just see yeah see so you can see them sort of bounce back and forth with gravity um, but it's not really going to do that the whole animation but that's the idea uh, but with these settings, I'm going to leave them as is because the wind is going to act on when you actually press wind It changes it to a different kind of setting no torque so that basically there, there's no force on its own It's just sort of passive uh, It's passive with the atmospheric force. So that's why it changes that to zero. Otherwise Without the wind if I were moving this other bone rotating it It would rotate those bones and they would bounce more violently with that torque and then the springiness would just make it m more bouncing. But we're going to be using the wind. So um, let's go ahead and click the wind now. And then we will set the wind parameters how we want them to blow on this hair. So I'm going to go to the frame where this uh, character morphs into the... Oh, and I already hit the wind, so you can see. So it's blowing the hair already as is. So that's cool. All right, let's just see if it's exactly, maybe we don't want that much. And the way you can do that is go to this wind tool. It opens up all your uh, options up here, the direction, the and you can see the arrow is pointing to the right. So the direction is going to the right. The strength is 20, the turbulent amplitude, and then the turbulent frequency is how often that, that occurs. Um, but maybe let's do 10. And when I press enter, you see it add, adds a keyframe on the wind tool here. So let's go ahead and add that tool further back before. I'm going to bring that keyframe before the morph. So right when the morph starts happening. Right here. Right here. Okay, so let's bring that keyframe back to there before right after the morph happens and then um, let's go to frame zero and set the wind to um, strength zero so that way it's not blowing for the first part of the animation I think that's gonna work and I think 10 is actually rather good one last thing I want to do is go to my particle layers for the torches um, just to get the sparks going in the same direction that the wind is so if I go to my particle layer go to the particle settings I'm gonna move this I think uh, this layer is actually switched so the opposite direction is the way I need to go so left uh, setting to the left is actually gonna be going to the right because that whole layer has been flopped uh, horizontally so 
as it comes on. So you'll see the sparks on that torch are now moving to the right. So that will give us the right direction. We need to do th the same thing with the other torch. So I'm going to go to, um, this is my second flame here. Um, that's flame two. Where's flame one? Okay. So flame one. We want to take those particles. And this torch is not flipped because it's angled the other direction horizontally. And we will go to the right here. And that should do what we want to see. See, and now the sparks are moving in the correct direction. All right, guys. Hope you like enjoyed this video. Um, give it a like. Uh, put a comment down in the section uh, comment section. Let me know what you liked about it and what you'd like to see in the future. Um, and thanks for watching. Take care.